So there's a crisis at the border, a pandemic that is stubbornly sticking around, and a more stubborn crime wave in our biggest cities that threatens to get worse with the warmer weather. But maybe the most important story out there is just a change in Senate procedures, because it could affect everything. That's why over the next week or so, you're going to hear a lot about the filibuster. Simply put, it is a Senate rule that allows the minority party to block or delay legislation introduced by the majority party. It used to be that to filibuster, a senator would have to stand on the Senate floor and talk continuously, as Jimmy Stewart famously did in the classic movie, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. He tried to stop a corrupt bill and spoke for over 23 hours. And I'm gonna stay right here and fight for this lost cause, even if this room gets filled with lies like these. And the tailors and all their armies come marching into this place. Somebody will listen to me. Although a senator has never passed out like that on the Senate floor, the scene is really not that far from the truth. Then Democratic Senator Strom Thurmond from South Carolina, a segregationist, once filibustered on the Senate floor for 24 hours and 18 minutes. That's a record. He was trying to stop the 1957 Civil Rights Act. He finally stopped because his physician thought he would ruin his kidneys, even though there was a bucket set up for him in a nearby cloakroom. Just two hours after Senator Thurmond finally sat down, the 1957 Civil Rights Act was passed, and Republican President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed it into law. That's why in 1975, the Senate passed a new filibuster rule. It used to be you needed 67 votes to stop a filibuster, they changed that to 60 votes. As a result, senators no longer had to stand up and speak ad nauseum to delay or stop a bill. So here's what happens now. There is a call for unanimous consent to vote on a bill. Now that happens a whole lot more than you think because it doesn't get a lot of coverage. And if all the senators agree, the voting begins. If not, they have something called a cloture vote to see if there are 60 votes to avoid a filibuster, stop debate, and vote on the bill. And if the bill doesn't get 60 votes, that's it. The bill is shelved, and it's officially said to have been filibustered. That's a whole lot different from this. You know, he got an Academy Award nomination for this. I don't know. It's, it's a little over the top for me. So anyway, nowadays it's a whole lot easier to stop a bill. That's why you'll hear all the time that a bill needs 60 votes in the Senate to pass. And look, I'm sorry that I'm turning this into a civics lesson, but it's really important you understand. The Republicans filibustered President Obama's policies constantly, and the Democrats did the same to President Trump. So the Democrats now are proposing to get rid of the modern filibuster, and guess who's all for that? President Joe Biden, who longs for the good old days, or so he told, George Stephanopoulos on ABC. Do it what it used to be when I first got to the Senate, and that is that a filibuster, you had to stand up and command the floor. Once you stopped talking, you lost that, and someone could move in and say, I moved the question of. So you gotta work for the filibuster. So you're for that reform. You're for bringing back the talking filibuster. I am. That's what it was supposed to be. Just put a hold on it, that's it. Yeah, it almost is getting to the point where democracy's having a hard time functioning. Oh. I beg to differ. Democracy is working just fine. Democracy is working exactly like the founders envisioned it. They set up a difficult legislative gauntlet to weed out bad or radical ideas. They gave the minority party power to force compromise and to make certain that our country is never ruled by a king who can get what he wants when he wants because his party happens to control Congress. The Democrats know this, and that's why they want to get rid of the filibuster, to pass things like the Green New Deal, a tax hike to pay for it, and other policies, and to increase the number of justices on the Supreme Court with justices they get to pick. 
things that would never get past a filibuster without compromise. In 2017, 27 Senate Democrats signed a letter that was sent to then Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell imploring him not to get rid of the filibuster. Even though President Trump wanted him to get rid of it, Mitch McConnell told the president, no, the filibuster's staying. Those same senators now want to do the same thing that they said was unconstitutional four years ago, which is why McConnell, who is now minority leader, is so upset and threatening to use every procedural maneuver in the book to shut things down for the next two years with chaos. This chaos would not open up an express lane to liberal change. It would not open up an express lane for the Biden presidency to speed into the history books. The Senate would be more like a hundred car pileup. Nothing moving. As of right now, it doesn't look like the filibuster in its current form is going anywhere. Right now, there are two Democratic senators, Joe Manchin from West Virginia and Kristen Sinema from Arizona, who are on record saying they are against changing the filibuster. But keep an eye on these two, because there's a lot of pressure being put on them by the White House. The White House should be careful about what it wishes for, because when you change a rule like this, there are future consequences. If the Republicans win back the Senate in the 2022 midterms, they'll have the power, and there will be payback. I'm Larry Menti. We'll talk again soon.